In a previous episode on Ukraine, I talked about the dissolution of the Soviet Union, but I will explain that in detail in another video. Today, I will look at Russia in the 1990s under Boris Yeltsin's leadership, which remains controversial even today. The first president of the Russian Federation started energetically, but over time, the weight of his position seemed to overwhelm him and his grip on power weakened, giving rise to a group of oligarchs and eventually Vladimir Putin. In 1990, General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev was desperately trying to keep the Soviet Union together with more political concessions and failing reforms, but the economy continued to decline and ethnic disputes gave rise to nationalist movements. More and more republics wanted out, there was trouble in the Baltics, the Caucasus, the Central Asian republics and the Western regions as well. The Communist Party gave up its monopoly, competitive elections were held in all 15 republics, but Moscow was losing its grip on its satellite states in Eastern Europe. Interestingly, even Russia turned against the Soviet system. In March, relatively free elections were held, new deputies joined the Congress of People's Deputies of Russia, and while Gorbachev asked them not to vote for Boris Yeltsin, they chose him in May, making him chair of the Supreme Soviet, basically the parliament. Yeltsin soon resigned from the Communist Party, and while several republics proclaimed independence and ethnic clashes broke out in others, in March 1991, a union-wide referendum signaled public support for a reformed Soviet Union. In June, Yeltsin was elected president of Russia with 57% of the votes, and the Russian Federation soon declared its autonomy, although it started talks with the other republics and Gorbachev regarding a new union treaty. This was too much for communist hardliners who isolated Gorbachev in the Crimea and attempted a coup in Moscow. The August coup failed, but by the time Gorbachev arrived back in Moscow, Yeltsin, who acted bravely and led the resistance against the communists, was in a much stronger position. In December, Gorbachev held a secret meeting with Yeltsin and the leaders of Ukraine and Belarus, Leonid Kravchuk and Stanislav Shushkevich. The Belaveja Agreement dissolved the Soviet Union and created the Commonwealth of Independent States in its place, ignoring the results of the March referendum. Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev resigned, Boris Yeltsin followed him in the Kremlin, but as President of Russia. The Congress of People's Deputies, which was unchanged since no legislative elections took place, soon ratified the document, all three republics kept their seats in the United Nations, but the Soviet superpower was gone, the bipolar world of the Cold War was replaced with a unipolar one, with the United States as the sole dominant nation. The first years of the new republic were turbulent. A globally integrated market economy had to be created, but Yeltsin's radical reforms, which were based on the recommendations of the IMF and Western economists like Larry Summers, led to chaotic and often extremely corrupt privatization processes, turning over state-owned firms at depressed prices to politically connected oligarchs who soon waged serious power. GDP fell by 40%, inflation wiped out savings, the standard of living declined, while financial manipulations enriched a small group whose members usually invested their money abroad. Just like today, the energy sector was of primary importance, but throughout the 90s, oil prices remained relatively low, which reduced government revenue, so increased borrowing from the IMF was needed to finance reforms. And most of those reforms did not result in considerable improvement. In 1992, Yeltsin called for a new constitution, but this led to a standoff with the Congress of People's Deputies, where his supporters were in a minority. After a compromise, Tensions increased again the following year, 
when the Congress nullified the extraordinary powers granted to the President back in 1991. Yeltsin refused to obey the Congress, which then tried to remove him from power, but could not gather the required number of votes for impeachment. In April, a nationwide referendum approved the President's policies, both sides proposed a draft constitution, but the Congress continued to oppose the President, who wanted new elections to create a new parliament. The Congress also had popular support, many blamed Yeltsin for the economic disaster and the rise in corruption and violent crime. The Congress passed new decrees on the economy in July and August when the President was on vacation and also launched investigations on his key advisors, accusing them of corruption. In September, Yeltsin clashed with the deputies on several matters, then dissolved the Congress and the Supreme Soviet, which was active between two sessions of the Congress, and called for new elections to establish the Federal Assembly, a new parliament. In response, Congress dismissed the President and named the Vice President as his successor, but in early October, pro-presidential forces stormed the White House in Moscow and forcefully dissolved the Congress. Before the end of the year, a new constitution was passed in a referendum and a federal assembly was elected, in which Vladimir Zhirinovsky's Nationalist Party became the largest faction. The constitutional crisis was over, but there was no respite for the president as the first Chechen war broke out in the south. The Chechen Republic of Ichkeria was a de facto independent entity, but Russian forces tried to covertly overthrow its government, after which clashes broke out. Russia then tried to suppress the Chechen guerrillas, but it proved to be extremely difficult in the mountainous terrain. The Russian public did not support the war, which brought no results despite heavy losses, so in 1996 a ceasefire was declared, followed by a peace treaty, making the Republic once again de facto independent. It was a humiliating defeat for Russia, but at the same time, questions regarding media freedom emerged, as 30 journalists were killed in this period, between 1993 and 2000, usually after reporting on the war, organized crime, government officials, and large businesses. Democracy was failing, or to be more precise, it never actually got a chance to develop. Yeltsin, who ran as an independent, won the 1996 presidential election with 54% of the votes, amid allegations of fraud. By then, he was in poor health, he disappeared for longer periods, then he underwent surgery, not returning to work until early 1997. The peace treaty with the Chechens was then signed, the ruble was devalued, but government policies were increasingly influenced by a group of oligarchs led by Boris Berezovsky, who allegedly masterminded Yeltsin's re-election through his TV station and financial backing. Together with Anatoly Chubais, they pushed out hardliners, taking full control of the Kremlin, but their group soon split into two, competing for Yeltsin's favor and waging a media war against each other, revealing one corrupt deal after another, digging their own graves. While the elites were busy with their internal clashes, the economy continued to decline. A crisis developed by August 1998, the ruble was devalued four times, Parliament called for Yeltsin's resignation, and the newly appointed Prime Minister, Yevgeny Primakov, had to be sacked after just eight months to avoid impeachment. In the meantime, Berezovsky formed a close alliance with the president's daughter and his chief of staff, creating a new informal group, the family, that influenced all important decisions. In 1999, they persuaded Yeltsin to name a little-known Vladimir Putin as his successor and candidate for the presidency. Within a few months, a new unity party was created for the sole purpose of supporting Putin. It did well in the election, along with Berezovsky, who won a seat in the Duma. As the economy was in dire straits, the situation in Chechnya deteriorated, 
Apartment bombings took place in Moscow, allegedly by FSB agents, although it was officially deemed a terrorist attack, so Putin launched counter-terrorist operations, while an old and sick Yeltsin announced his resignation in a televised address. Putin was named acting president, he then won the March 2000 presidential election and proceeded to consolidate his power, pushing aside those who tried to resist. I will talk about subsequent events in another video, it is certainly an interesting topic. Thank you for watching, see you next time!